What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English vid. I'm Gabi Young, and in today's lesson, we're going to expand your vocabulary by learning 10 advanced short phrases. Are you ready to build your vocabulary? If so, grab your notebook and let's kick off. So first, we're going to learn two C1 phrases, and then the rest will be level C2. So the first C1 phrase is for good. Very short and easy to pronounce. For good. And it means forever and permanently. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, they said goodbye for good. They said goodbye for good. The second example, he left the company for good. He left the company for good. And the last example, she'd like to stay in London for good. She'd like to stay in London for good. Let's move on to our second phrase, which is to say the least. To say the least. We use this phrase to suggest that a situation is much more extreme or serious than we say. And now, three examples. The first one, we won't be able to travel abroad until September, to say the least. We won't be able to travel abroad until September, to say the least. The second example, she was rather unfriendly, to say the least. She was rather unfriendly, to say the least. And the last example here, after losing his job, he was sad, to say the least. After losing his job, he was sad, to say the least. Okay, now let's move on to our C2 phrases. Number three, at length. At length. It means for a long time and in detail. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, we've discussed everything at length. We've discussed everything at length. The second example, they spoke about their trip to North Korea at great length. They spoke about their trip to North Korea at great length. We can say at length, or if we want to intensify it even more, we can add great, at great length. And one more example, she talked about her honeymoon at length. She talked about her honeymoon at length. Okay, now let's move on to our phrase number four, which is a good plus noun. A good plus noun. Usually it's a number and it means more than. And now some examples. The first example, it's a good one hour's ride to the beach. It's a good one hour's ride to the beach, which means that it takes over an hour to get to the beach. The second example, it was a good 35 degrees outside. It was a good 35 degrees outside. It means that it was over 35 degrees. And the last example, he must have drunk a good 12 pints last night. He must have drunk a good 12 pints last night, which means that he must have drunk more than 12 pints. Let's continue our phrase number five is by all means. By all means. It means, of course, and we can use it to give permission or to agree with somebody. And now, three examples. The first one, may I use your phone? By all means. May I use your phone? By all means. The second example, could I have a glass of water? By all means. You don't need to ask. Could I have a glass of water? By all means. You don't need to ask. And the last example here, shall we go to the cinema tonight? By all means. Shall we go to the cinema tonight? By all means. And guys, before we continue, just a super quick reminder to make sure that you're subscribed to English Bits and remember to activate the notifications so that you don't miss my weekly lesson. Number six, beyond somebody's reach or just beyond reach 
or we can also say out of somebody's reach or out of reach. It means that you can't have something or do something because you don't have enough money or skill. If it's the opposite and you can do something, it's to be within somebody's reach. And now some examples. The first one, buying a housing is beyond a lot of young people's reach. Buying a housing is beyond a lot of young people's reach. The second example, a Tesla is out of reach. A Tesla is out of reach. And the last example, making this trip is within my reach. Making this trip is within my reach which means that I can afford to make this trip. Number seven, as something implies. As something implies. We use this phrase to show that the name of something tells you something about it. And now a few examples. The first one, a spork as its name implies, is a utensil that combines a spoon and a fork. A spork as its name implies, is a utensil that combines a spoon and a fork. The second example, an influencer, as the name implies, is someone who affects people's decisions and actions. An influencer, as the name implies, is someone who affects people's decisions and actions. And the last example, The coronavirus, as the name implies, resembles a crown. The coronavirus, as the name implies, resembles a crown. Let's move on to our phrase number eight, which is on the spur of the moment. On the spur of the moment. If you do something on the spur of the moment, it means that you do it impulsively and suddenly, or you make a decision without any planning. And now, some examples. The first one, Sienna was going to study medicine, but on the spur of the moment, she decided to start an acting career. Sienna was going to study medicine, but on the spur of the moment, she decided to start an acting career. The second example, on the spur of the moment, I booked a flight to Japan. On the spur of the moment, I booked a flight to Japan. And one more example, he quit his job on the spur of the moment. He quit his job on the spur of the moment. And you can also use spur of the moment as an adjective. For example, it was a spur of the moment decision. It was a spur of the moment decision. Our second to last phrase is at issue at issue. It means the most important aspect of the subject that is being discussed. And now, some examples. The first one, the point at issue here is how to cut corners without reducing quality. The point at issue here is how to cut corners without reducing quality. The second example, what is at issue is whether they have breached the contract. What is at issue is whether they have breached the contract. And the last example here, your good intention is not at issue. Your good intention is not at issue. And last but not least, number 10, a very similar phrase to the previous one, the bottom line, the bottom line. And it's the most important fact in a situation. And now, three examples. The first one, the bottom line is that we won't be able to travel abroad this summer. The bottom line is that we won't be able to travel abroad this summer. The second example, the bottom line is that the economy has collapsed. The bottom line is that the economy has collapsed. And the last example, the bottom line, is keep going and not get stuck in the exam. The bottom line is keep going and not get stuck in the exam. 
So guys, that's it for today. I hope you found this English bit useful. If you want to learn more advanced short phrases, you can check out the first editions right here. And of course, if you enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!